I'll call the ninth regular meeting of the Common Council of Order. So would you please call the roll? Bauman. Excuse. Deberg. Here. Eberg. Here. Serta. Here. Davis. Here. Graf. Here. Kittleson. Here. Manny. Here. Meyer. Here. Montemayor. Here. Radke. Here. Sagali. Here. Stefan. Here. Susha. Here. Van Akron. Here. And Vanderweel. 15 present. Quorum present. Approval of the minutes. I'd ask for a motion to approve. Mr. Alderman Groff. Thank you, Your Honor. I would move that we approve, the, we dispense with the reading of the, the minutes of the previous meeting and the same stand approved is entered on the record. Second. There's a motion and a second. Any discussion? If not, all those in favor state aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Pledge of Allegiance. I'd ask Alderman Meyer to please join us, lead us. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Alderman Meyer. Before we move on to the public forum, there's an announcement I'd like to make to the uh, Common Council, and that is that the special meeting that was scheduled for Wednesday has been uh, canceled until further notice. I received notice from the people who were involved in the presentation that they were unable to put the presentation together in time and they asked that we cancel it. So that's a reason for canceling. So there will be no special meeting on Wednesday. Public forum, Sue. Um, first on the list would be Susan Hunley. And Susan, can you give me your home address, please? In Avenue. And you will have five minutes. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. um, I'm here again to speak tonight about the formation of a room tax commission. I um, will be repeating quite a bit of what I said at the Finance Committee, but uh, oh, excuse me. Thank you, Mayor and Council, for allowing me the opportunity to speak tonight. Um, for those altar persons that were not present for, at the Finance Committee, I do feel several points are important. Um, one thing that I did hand out at the Finance Committee, and uh, I do apologize, I had planned on getting a packet together for Sue to put in your um, uh, agenda, or your package tonight, but I did have a daughter get married on Saturday, so <laughs> I was a little busy. In the packet that I did hand out to the um, Finance Committee last Monday evening was a letter signed by all 11 lodging properties in the city of Sheboygan that pay room tax, supporting the formation of a room tax commission. And um, the commission would then receive the room tax rather than right now you say that as a common council you act as the commission, which really by state statute is not the way to do it. You can either uh, have an in-house tourism director or you can uh, have a room tax commission which we have proposed and all of us have supported, those of us in lodging. Now I've heard repeatedly several people say that it's very important for the police to have input on where the police station should be built because they are the experts. Well, we feel the same way in lodging and tourism. We really do feel that we have a, a great um, lots of great ideas and um, we keep a current pulse on what brings tourism to our area. So that's why we feel we should have a say in this. Not to control but to actually help the promotion of Sheboygan. Um, I'm going to try to jump down, I'm sorry uh, to take this. Some of the um, myths and I did point this out last week about a room tax commission is that we want every penny to come to us and we'd control everything. That's not really true. The room tax commission would of course allow the city to keep what is allowed by state statute which would be the 80-20 split and then we would contract with the CVB to spend the money. We feel it should go directly to the CVB. We do not feel the chamber needs to take a percent especially for uh, salary for their director. We feel Denny Moyer is very competent but the uh, CVB would meet, and I know last week it was pointed out after I spoke that I didn't have a good plan. Well, that wasn't, if I gave that impression, that wasn't true. Um, we've talked 
extensively in lodging about this. What I meant to say is until we find out when uh, Denny Moyer does have to attend uh, trade shows and so forth, and we have five months from today, that we could easily have our plan in place for you. And uh, another myth was that civic um, functions would disappear if the commission exists. That definitely is not true. We would enhance it, like the, the example I gave was, um, and actually, looking at Alderman Eldenburg now reminds me of his carousel. And I did tell him that's such a great idea. I, I think we you know, could become known as the community that has a carousel. A lot of people would come. They would be at that ban function. So, you know, I'm not saying it would happen overnight, but we would enhance. We wouldn't detract. We want people to come here. We want this a known tourist des destination. One thing that was pointed out is that the chamber has not followed the contract for the four years, and a lot of it had to do with promoting the city of Sheboygan itself. Well, as you acted as the commission, rather than having a true room tax commission, it was your fault too. You let this fall by the wayside for four years. Nobody, nobody caught it until Susan Hart did an extensive study and was able to show where uh, the contract had not been followed. I do believe the room tax should go to promote Sheboygan. I think we have a lot to promote in the city. If they come to golf at Kohler, Kohler is only a mile away. If they're in this area one time, I don't think they're going to miss the opportunity to go to our lakefront. Uh, we have an art center that's considered one of the top five in the nation. We have Boardwalk, Maywood, Symphony. We have things to do year-round. So I really do believe that. A, an idea is a zone commission. If we want to um, have the uh, uh, CBB promote the city and the county, they can form a zone commission. What we have to do is have the same room tax as the other people in the commission. Right now, we're the high end at 8%. So if we did have a 6% and uh, use that for tourism promotion, maybe the uh, county then, Excuse uh, me, Susan. I'm out. I'm, I'm sorry. sorry, your time is <laughs> That's OK. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much. much. You're welcome. Next on the list is Dan Verhasselt. Dan, could you give me your home address, please? It's 705 Fairway Drive. And you will have five minutes. All right. I'd like to thank everybody for their time tonight. It's been a while since I've been in front of the council, and I'm glad to say that it's under drastically different terms than it, it probably has over the last 12 months been. I'd like to take a few minutes tonight just to thank this council for what they've done in saving Sheridan Park, but also inform them about the revitalization efforts that have been taking place in the four months or three months since Sheridan Park has come off the chopping block. The revitalization of Sheridan Park is taking place in a lot of different ways. I think the first focus of it was to answer a lot of the concerns of some of the neighbors in the area, and that was to do with safety. Number one, a lot of the brush has been cleared on the east side of the park, which a number of people have mentioned. It's been, along with City Hall and Mayline, they've worked together nicely to clear a lot of the brush away. Secondly, a security camera has been placed in the park. Thirdly, simple things like picnic tables, fryers, and grills have been placed in the park for the first time in a number of years and have been there all summer. Sounds simple, but the fact is they haven't been there in the past, or in the recent past. Sheridan Park is being revitalized in a lot of other ways as well. The Friends of Sheboygan's Parks held their first annual Fourth Fest at Sheridan Park on this past 4th of July. Being the primary organizer of the event, I have to admit I was a bit nervous but I am glad to say that we had over 300 people who were there to enjoy food, music, and fireworks. If you haven't been there to watch the fireworks, I'd encourage you, this is the place in the city to watch fireworks. It's really a spectacular view, and you can see largely all the fireworks. Because of its success, we're actually organizing next year's event already. The Friends of Sheboygan's Parks are also looking to launch a children's festival later this year. In addition, the Friends of Sheboygan's Parks continue their fundraiser. Many donations have been received so far. And with these funds, our group hopes to be presenting this council with a request later this summer for some equipment for Sheridan Park. I would specifically like to thank the Sheboygan Press and WHBL for their help to date on advertising this fund drive campaign. Also, with the help of City Hall, the Sheboygan Police Department, and the Friends of Sheboygan Park, neighborhood watch discussions have begun and are ongoing to develop in the Sheridan neighborhood. The sometimes heated Sheridan Park saga over the last 12 months have produced many broader benefits as well for the community. 
Number one, a, a board of park and forestry has been developed. And as chairman of the commission, I plan to make every effort possible not only to protect and improve our parks, but to grow our city park system. It's a fact that parks add to our quality of life, and I want to be a part of that. Also, another side effect has been a grassroots citizen group, the Friends of Sheboygan's Park, has been developed and to become involved with city politics. And I think anytime citizens or citizen groups get involved with their government, that's a good thing. Vicki Hall, co-chair of the group, has been organizing city park tours in addition to that at various city parks to educate and help people learn <coughs> ideas to recreate within our city park system. And that's being met with great success. I would lastly like to thank, well, one last note, our upcoming park tour is at King Park this coming Saturday, 11 o'clock, and everybody here is welcome to attend. Lastly, I'd like to thank Mayor Perez and his entire staff for all that they've done in the first four months in office to make Sheboygan a better place to live. Talk, there is no longer talk of destroying parks, but talk of improving parks. And ultimately, when we improve parks, we improve quality of life. With this council's help, I hope to be here in the future talking about more park successes. Sheridan Park was a wake-up call, but I think it's going to prove to be a great template for this city to use in revitalizing other city parks and neighborhoods. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. Next on the list would be Jason Shane. Jason, can I get your home address, please? 1418A Bluff Avenue. I'd like to thank the mayor and common council for giving me a chance to speak tonight. I'm very concerned with your decision on putting such a high cap of $17 million to build a new police station. We don't need a Saddam Palace. We need a police station. I have some questions the taxpayers asked me while I was doing the petition drive for a referendum on this issue. Number one, I was wondering if you noticed how many houses are up for sale due to our high taxes. I would like you to know, you aldermen to know, that you are pushing the citizens out of their houses due to outstanding high taxes. I would like you to know there's a lot of citizens on set incomes that cannot afford keeping their, their taxes going up. Why are we asking the police department where to put the police station? You should be the ones to choose the site for the best interest of the taxpayers. They're the ones who have to pay for it. You aldermen have to remember, you're in these seats because the taxpayers put you there, not the police department. I would like to ask the finance department if we really can afford this kind of money for a police station. You elderly need to answer these questions for the taxpayers that put you in these seats. There are a few elder persons that forgot that the taxpayers put them into these seats. As you could tell, the attendance at the public input meeting was not good. Some of you elder persons left early or weren't even there. Thanks. Thank you, Jason. Next on the list is Lee Montemayor. Lee, could I have your home address, please? Thank you, Sue. My address is 1015 Logan. And you will have five minutes. Thank you, Madam City Clerk, Mayor, Council Members. Uh, my stuff's a little different. Uh, I would like to talk about the parks, but I, I've been kind of <coughs> railroaded in to get involved with a problem that we have in, in, uh, in the city. And so my comments are focused on the overpopulation of girls inside the city limits. Uh, we are one of many communities that have, are having this problem. Sheboygan problem is because we have, the girls have decided to nest here. Although I cannot give you an instant solution that would rectify the overpopulation of girls in one certain area, I can give you my opinion on a plan to reduce the population of girls. It would require a process to be followed for a number of years until the reduction goal has been reached. Maybe to the point that this governing body may be required to have these landowners maintain their properties so that to discourage the girls from missing on their properties. I would like to thank Mr. Ben Nelson of the Wildlife, Special, the Wildlife Pest Specialist for the USDA that provided us with the valuable information of the laws and studies of these birds. His attention of our problem is greatly appreciated. Let me start by saying that these gulls are protected by law 
Secondly, that the areas in question are on private property. And I'm going to give you five basic facts on this thing. Okay? The first is that the areas in question are on private owned lands and they should be addressed as that. The gulls were in these areas long before we developed the areas for humans. Now because the gulls are nesting in these areas, they have become a troublesome issue. Another fact, female gulls lay between two and four eggs a year and are likely to return to the same area each year. At this rate, if the eggs all hatch, one gull could possibly increase to five gulls in just one year. Now we know one of the reasons for the large populations. The hatched chicks start reproducing the second year of their life and are likely to return to the same areas to reproduce year after year. Assuming a low mortality rate, the original gull that started laying of eggs could possibly turn into 2,400, uh, 24 gulls by the third year. Now, if you multiply that by an example of 100 gulls, you got 2,400 gulls in three short years. Now you got a big, messy problem in an area, and if the general public is there, it could be a health issue. Our city has enacted a new, a new no feeding of gulls ordinance, but we may need to implement further measures to control the gull problem. Simple not feeding or scaring the gulls for a few minutes are not productive enough. My personal opinion and recommendation would be to have these landowners start a humanely controlled process to reduce the gold population. The oiling of eggs after they've been laid seems to be a very humane way to control these gulls. It would have to be done yearly during the breeding and nesting periods. It would take some years to reduce the, bull, the gull population, but it will work if you follow the process. I hope my observations, research, and recommendation are some help to this messy gull problem. Thank you. Thank you, Lee. And next on the list is Carter Paulus. And Carter, could I have your home address, please? 414 Erie Avenue. And you will have five minutes. Thank you, and thank you, Your Honor, and the Chamber for the opportunity to speak again before you. Tonight, I am going to be speaking about our Chamber of Commerce. In attending the last financial meeting, which was a real eye-opener, we learned that while they received 76%, or over $290,000, of their operating funds from the city, they elected to spend only 37% or $107,300 for the city of Sheboygan. There is such a thing as specific performance concerning contracts, and they have not performed per contract both in spirit and letter, not to mention financially for the city of Sheboygan. This was fully explained by Susan Hart, our chief administrative officer. The result of this has been a serious lack of marketing of the city of Sheboygan to the point of it taking a back seat to the Chamber's short-sighted policies and stubborn resolve to continue its own way to the city's detriment. Many of our city's public and beneficial groups, not to mention our local business community, have had to struggle with little, incorrect, or no publicity at all from the Chamber of Commerce. The Finance Committee wisely voted not to renew the Chamber's contract next year. Remember, if any business 
or any other kind of an entity got shortchanged to the tune of $180,000 like Sheboygan did from the chamber, you would be in court before your next breath. Where do we go from here? Well, Paulette Enders, our Director of Planning and Development, gave a superb presentation of where we can go in the future in promoting Sheboygan, as many other cities do, and stands ready and willing to perform for our city. We already have the money from the room tax, which will grow. We already have the brain power and the technology to run our own program to our city's benefit. We already have the combined publicity ideas of our entire city ready to leap into action. What we need from you, the council, is a unanimous resolution to have the city perform its own needed promotion with the only proviso, if you will, that the monies collected from the room tax goes to promoting tourism in our city of Sheboygan. You have a rare opportunity to really start to move this city forward into the future. Please, let's do it now. Thank you very much. Thank you, Carter. Next, we move on to consent agenda. Alderman Groff. Thank you, Your Honor. Before I get into the consent agenda, I'd like to pull document 949 forward. 949 is a resolution authorizing the borrowing from the trust funds of the state of Wisconsin, the sum of $720,000 for the purpose of constructing and equipping, equipping a fire station and for no other purpose. At this particular time, Your Honor, I would move that the resolution be put upon its passage. There's a motion and a second to put resolution number 949 upon its passage under discussion. There being none, Sue, would you please call the roll? D. Berg. Aye. E. Berg. Aye. Serta. Aye. Davis. Aye. Graf. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Manny. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Radke. Aye. Sigali. Aye. Stefan. Aye. Susha. Aye. Van Akron. Aye. And Vanderweel. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. Alderman Graf. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, at this time, I'd also like to pull forward uh, item 964, which is a um, RC, a committee report uh, by the city clerk submitting a communication from the Sheboygan County Chamber of Commerce stating their contract desires they would like to see a new room tax agreement for 2006. Um, and the RC recommends that the report of officer be placed on file and that the Sheboygan County Chamber of Commerce be notified that the contract for 2006 will not be renewed and will be brought in house. I would move that the RC be accepted and adopted and um, <coughs> that the arrow be accepted and placed on file or? Just not accept, and adopt accept and adopt Accept and adopt. Okay. There's a motion and a second to accept and adopt 964 under discussion. Under discussion, Your Honor. I may. Uh, if you'd all look at the history of, of room tax that we all received a copy of with our agendas, and you turn to um, the page that uh, lists the chamber services to include. It's about the fifth or sixth page. If you look on there, and I'm, I'm not speaking for the entire finance committee, but I believe this was one of the, the big things that we looked at as far as uh, moving uh, the, the direction that we did. And if you look at uh, what the chamber was supposed to do with their contract that they had approximately four years to do, it says coverage for 40 hours a, a week. That was fulfilled. Um, Item two is an interactive website 24 seven with links to the city of Sheboygan and bid. The websites were not available from the visitor screen and you must go into the chamber's web website to community section in order to see the city of Sheboygan. 
Item number three is the development, printing, and distribution of festivals of Sheboygan, which was supposed to be a trifold. That was not fulfilled. That was not done. There was supposed to be development and printing and distribution of a Sheboygan attractions trifold, which was also not done. There was supposed to be a retitling of annual visitor's guide to Sheboygan slash Sheboygan County visitor's guide. That was not done. Also, placing Harbor Center bid brochures in all chamber newcomer packets without charge. Currently, that is not in the business or re residential newcomer packets. Annual marketing plan submitted to city each fall, not fulfilled. The chamber submits an annual report that discusses yearly accomplishments, but no marketing plan. The next item is Convention and Visitors Bureau Advisory Committee composed of 75% of city representation. That was done. Also, there was develop additional funding for the Convention and Visitors Bureau to include other communities supporting tourism with room taxes. Chamber CVB receives 76% of its budget from the city room tax dollars, 7% from other county room tax dollars. And from some county entities, they receive nothing. Additional chamber responsibilities include provide semi-annual written reports to the city detailing services rendered, programs initiated, and their impact upon tourism and convention trade within the city for the preceding six months. The chamber only provides one written report to the Common Council and does not break out what the city impact is. Also, using the city room tax dollars to promote services directly related to the tourism and convention industry for and on behalf of the city. The chamber primarily promotes Sheboygan County in its publications. The city of, of Sheboygan is interspersed throughout the Sheboygan County publications. The great majority of advertisements paid for by the chamber are for promoting Sheboygan County. This contract was, um, was put into place in January of 2002 and amended um, in December 2005 to, um, to uh, include a room tax rate of 8%. The, um, this has been renewed for one year uh, as of last, last year, I believe. So the, the, uh, the contract is up for renewal right now. I'm not saying that the chamber did everything wrong because they do an excellent job in, in promoting the county. But they are not doing what we as a city expected them to do. Granted, no one from the city looked at this and found this until Ms. Hart um, looked up what was, what was being done and what was not being done. With her recommendation, uh, the Finance Committee voted to, uh, to move this particular um, issue in-house and to work on it in-house. Uh, if we were a business and if we were operating like a business, like many people have said in the past, why doesn't the government run like a business? In this particular case, if we were a business and had a situation like this, we would fire our advertising firm that uh, was doing our advertising for us and find someone new. So with that, I'd hope that all the council members approve this um, process to bring this in-house. Thank you, Alderman Groff. Any further discussion? Alderman Sarda. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I've also had the opportunity to speak to the chamber and I take exception to some of the things that were pointed out here and I will on a later date share those things because I've also come up with another option because I don't think we can fault the chamber fully because we haven't, they have complied to some of these standards and Alderman Groff and Paulette Enders both were acting as representatives on that CVB board and if at any time you took issue with this you had full opportunity to explain your, yourself. But what I am introducing later on, I am, and this will be um, forwarded to the Finance Committee, is another option. And that is creating a Tourism Advisory Committee and then also giving the Chamber the benefit of the doubt given the new direction that the City wants to take. And therefore, I don't feel it's, this is adequate time to deal with this issue. And I know there's other older persons that feel the same. And so therefore, I'm going to initiate a three-man hold. Okay. Please uh, note three-man hold. Alman Burke, Serda, Sigali. For the benefit of the public and the gallery, when there's a, when three aldermen invoke the, the particular code in, in our municipal code that allows three aldermen to defer any action once on any issue and the discussion ends, 
and that matter will be taken up at the next meeting, which may be no earlier than one week. That is the way the code reads. So at this point, we'll move on. There will be no discussion. The main hold has been invoked, and we will move on. Alderman Graff. Thank you, Your Honor. Oh, excuse me, Alderman Graff. Alderman Susha. Thank you. It's a little warmer in here than I expected, and I'm not feeling well, so I'm going to excuse myself. Alderman Susha, you are excused. Alderman Graff. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, then getting back to the consent agenda, items 9 1 through 9 17, I would move that our all all ROs be accepted and placed on file. All RCs be accepted and adopted. We pass the resolutions and general ordinance. <clears throat> There's a motion and a second. Under discussion? We do a roll call. Yes. There being none, Sue, would you please call the roll? Eberg. Aye. Serta. Aye. Davis. Aye. Graff. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Manny. Aye. M Meyer. Montemayor, Racky, Sagali, Aye. Stephan, Aye. Van Akron, Aye. Vanderweel, Aye. and Deberg. 14 ayes. Motion carries. Communications and petitions uh, 918 to 925 to be referred. Reports of officers 926 to 947 to be referred, except for 947, if you will please note. 947 will be referred to salary and grievance, not finance. Resolutions introduced, 948 will lie over. 950 by Alderman Groff, authorizing the establishment of an escrow fund with respect to certain outstanding bonds. Alderman Groff. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I would move that that resolution be put upon its passage. Second. There's a motion and a second. Put resolution number 950 under its passage, under discussion. If not, please call the roll. Serta? Aye. Davis? Aye. Graff? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Sigali? Aye. Stephan? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. D. Berg Aye. and E. Berg, Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. 951 by Alderman Groff, authorizing the borrowing of $4,900,000 and providing for the issuance and sale of water utility revenue bonds, therefore. Alderman Groff. Thank you. That resolution, along with 952, which is a resolu resolution authorizing the borrowing of $3,595,000 and for providing uh, for the issuance and sale of gen general obligation bonds, Series A for TIF number three, and 953, which is uh, a resolution authorizing the borrowing of 3140000 and providing for the issuance and sale of gen general obligation refunding bonds, Series B. I would move that all three resolutions be put upon their passage. Second. Motion to second to put all three resolutions upon its passage. Under discussion, Alderman Sagali. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. If Alderman Graff could please um, explain these and go into a little bit more detail for the people in the general audience of watching TV, what all this means to them, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would ask that um, Finance Director, uh, who is here, and then uh, ask that um, Carol Worth, who is uh, with uh, Cubic. Um, oh, Oh, thank you. <laughs> I would ask that the floor be open to her to, um, to address the council with those issues. There's a motion to open the floor. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor, state aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Mr. Gibhart, Carol, please. Thank you. Uh, We've been, uh, Carol Worth of RBC Dane and uh, I have been working along with Joel Trueblood on some of these uh, issues. There's two letters that are on your desk that do outline the issues um, and Carol will review those with you. And uh, so there's some under the water utility of, of a new project for the reservoir and for refinancing uh, some of the previous issues. And then we also have a um, series of uh, 
refinancings for our tax incremental financing district number three, our business park, and also for our general purpose, uh, capital improvements, and a small amount for tax incremental district number 10, which is our, our Water Street uh, district. And uh, I'll turn it over to, to Carol to re review it with you. Okay, thank you. Um, I have prepared two memos that uh, address the, um, uh, first of all, the two resolutions, 950 and 951. Uh, both of those resolutions are for the water utility. And what we're doing there is this is part of a financial plan for the water utility. The water utility issues revenue bonds. Uh, revenue bonds are repaid from the revenues generated by that utility. Uh, they are not supported by tax levy. So what we're doing here is we're refinancing some existing debt of the water utility. They have 1989 and 1990 revenue bonds outstanding at very high interest rates. They're over 7%. So we're going to refinance those. And by doing so, we're getting rid of some of the restrictive covenants in the old resolutions. And we're going to start off with a brand new resolution in 2005 that will be for the $4.9 million issue. First of all, the 1989 bonds are callable beginning October 15 of 2000. And what that means is that the city has the ability to tell the existing bondholders we are stopping your interest payment on October 15th of 2005. There's about 400,000 outstanding and that interest rate is 7.4%. So obviously it's to the city's benefit. There's about a possibility of about $60,000 of savings by calling in those bonds. Of course, when we call in the bonds, we have to come up with the money to pay off that 400,000. So some of that is going to come from existing reserve funds that are designated for that purpose that um, is in accounts at the utility. And some of it we are going to need to issue part of that $4.9 million for. We also have 1990 bonds outstanding. They are not callable until a year from now, October 15th of 06. That means those bondholders are promised their interest payments until that time. So what we're going to do, again, we're going to use some utility funds on hand, and we're going to create an escrow. We're going to buy special governments from the Federal Reserve that are designated specifically for this type of purpose. We take those governments and we place them in an escrow account with an escrow agent. And the first resolution at 950, that appointed J.P. Morgan Trust Company as an escrow agent under an escrow agreement that says we'll take those governments that you buy with utility funds on hand and we will escrow those principal and interest payments until the call date on October 15th. And then they will call the bonds. They will notify the bondholders to turn in their bonds at that time. Once that escrow is established, and that date would be September 1st of 05, then they are considered legally defeased. They've been provided for. So that means as of that time, we will have either provided for the 1989 bonds by some refinancing with, with the 4.9 million and utility funds on hand, and we will have provided for the 1990 bonds by creating this escrow from utility funds on hand. So that pretty much explains what's going on in that first resolution. And then that second resolution obviously is related because the fact that the 4.9 million is going to, as I said, provide some of the funds for the refinancing of the 89 bonds. It is also going to provide funds for the new reservoir project and any type of engineering expenses that the utility is, is experiencing and providing for not only that project, but as well as a future intake project. Also, when you issue revenue bonds, you have to provide for a reserve fund. So that is part of this $4.9 million because it is not supported from tax levy. That's the security for the bondholders. They say, well, what happens if you don't have the money? If the revenues don't come in in time, well, you have a reserve fund. So that's also part of that $4.9 million. So that's money that's just kept by the utility in a special restricted fund and cannot be used for any other purpose. So that's what we're doing here with the, the resolution that's authorizing the $4.9 We are not borrowing the money as of today. 
The resolution is authorizing to proceed with a sale. And that means that um, I and my staff at Dane Rauscher will take the, this document has an attachment called a notice of sale. We will prepare what's called an official statement, which is like a prospectus on the city and the utility. And you'll get a copy. It looks like a phone book right now. And um, we distribute that nationwide. And we solicit bids on this from underwriters on your bonds nationwide. That bidding process will occur on, on, on August 15th. So this resolution is authorizing to proceed with the sale. So on August 15th, we would come back to you and say, this is the results of our sale. We had so many bids. Here is the lowest bid. And then we will also present to you another resolution that incorporates those sale results. It will also incorporate all of the covenants that are in a typical revenue bond resolution. So that will be the start of a brand new um, 2005 revenue bond resolution, and we will have defeased the 89 and 90 revenue bonds. Okay? Okay. Alderman oh, McGraw? Alderman oh, Sagali, did that answer your question? Or do what you wanted to do? Yeah? I don't have to balance my checkbook. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like me to cover the other two resolutions? If you. Okay. Um, the other memo that I had uh, was. Uh, related to the, um, uh, the other two dollar amounts, they're called um, general obligation refunding bonds. And what we're doing there is simply looking, we monitor the city's existing debt and see when we can save you some money. And we have um, some issues outstanding back from 1991 and 93 that were done for TIF 3. And they're at very high interest rates compared to today's market. And so we took a look at um, what happens, uh, and they're callable. Remember that term, callable? October 1 of 05, that means the city now can tell with a 30-day notice to the bondholders, we're not going to pay you interest past, past October 1. So um, we've done some analysis and have found that the city could save um, approximately $280,000 by refinancing uh, those bonds issued originally for TIF 3. So, so that's the uh, first resolu that resolution 952. And again, that resolution is setting the sale to occur on August 15th. So we're not doing that yet tonight. We're just by that resolution uh, authorizing that the sale should take place on August 15th and allowing us to proceed with that process. The second resolution, or, or actually the fourth resolution, which would be uh, 953, is the same type. It's a general obligation financing. Um, it's for bonds that were done for uh, primarily the city capital improvement projects, again, for the intention of saving money. Right now, the number is approximately $80,000 that we would save by refinancing them. The reason we have them split apart is because the revenues are coming from different places. The bonds issued for TIF 3 have the TIF increments coming to pay for that debt service. Bonds issued for capital improvement projects have the, debt, the tax levy paying for those purposes. So when you do the refinancing, it's important to keep them separated because they are coming from two different revenue sources. Just as the revenue bonds are, they're coming from the revenues of the utility. So that's kind of a quick summary of um, what we're doing. Oh, Maddie. Thank you, Your Honor. I just want to point out uh, for people listening on TV, that the savings are not one-year savings, they're multiple-year savings. Thank you, Alderman Many. Any other questions? Thank you, Carol. Thank you. Appreciate that. Thank you, Thank you Rich. We will call the roll on 51, 951, 952, and 953. Mm -hmm. Madam Clerk? Davis? Aye. Groff? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Manny? Meyer, Montemayor, Aye. Radke, Aye. Sigali, Aye. Stefan, Aye. Van Akron, Vanderweel, D. Berg, Aye. E. Berg, Aye. and Serta. Aye. 14 ayes. Motions carry. 954, Alderman McGraw. Thank you, Annie. Before we do that, can we just go back to, um, excuse me, um, item number 919, which was a communication and a petition that was. Um, referred to um, several committees. Um, these are the questions 
that I was able to write down, and Alderman Kittleson um, helped, helped me look go over those. And um, these were from the July 20th input session. These are being referred to the City Plan Commission, Public Protection and Safety Committee, Public Works Committee, as well as the Committee of the Whole. These are some of the questions that were asked at that listening session, and we're trying to get answers for them. I know several people have been wondering when they're going to get the answers, but we had to bring them into council in order to refer them to the committees. Now that the committees have them, we should get the answers back within two weeks, if, uh, four weeks at the most, I would guess. So I just wanted to let people know that. Thank you, Alderman Graf, for clarifying that. Alderman Stefan. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, it was just pointed out to me, uh, we passed document 9-9, which was an RFC by finance recommending filing various documents. Could I ask that we reconsider that document? Can you make a motion to reconsider, please? I would so move. There's a motion to reconsider item 99. Is there a I'm second? Second. There's a motion and a second to reconsider 99. Um, the reason I ask for reconsideration is RO 138056 by the City Clerk submitted to the Finance couldn't make it, and we were told it was going to be a thing. But it would be appropriate to give him a chance to speak. Excuse. Wait, wait. I'm not clear what you're doing, Alderman Stephan. You're trying to reconsider to take a separate vote or just for a well, explanation? Okay, let's take a vote on the motion to reconsider so that we can reconsider the issue. Do we need a roll call for that, Sue? No? No. Okay, motion to reconsider 9-9. There's been a motion made and a second. All those in favor, state aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Put okay, there's a motion. Hold on, hold on, hold on. You're making a motion. There's a motion, a second. Please, sir. It's okay. You need to take a vote. There was a vote. There was a motion. The question was made to divide. Now we need to vote on the on the motion to open the floor. I believe there was a second to that. Okay. All those in favor of the, to open in the floor, please state aye. aye. Any opposed? Floor has been open. Chair recognizes. Yes, sir. Please. Okay, my name is Steve Rasmussen. I reside with my family at 1812 North 29th Street here in Sheboygan. And the reason why I asked to get your time tonight is on March 10th, my wife was uh, driving on Calumet Avenue and trying to make a right hand turn on the North 25th, hit an icy patch, and made contact with a road sign. Uh, she called me at work, wasn't sure what to do. I told her you definitely have to call the police department, report it. So she went to the local bank. Police department came. My wife was instructed that there was not going to be any citations. Nothing was going to be issued. The road sign gets hit a lot and often. And the officer and my wife did not see any damage to the sign. On my way home that night, I usually drive home that way as well. I looked at the sign, didn't see any damage. I thought, what sign did you hit? So she cleared it up for me when I got home. The reason why. I'm asking for your time tonight as we received an invoice in the mail, invoice number 47608, dated June 14th. And the issue that we have is not that my wife made in contact with a sign or encountered a slippery spot, but just that it went from March 10th to June 14th before we heard anything from either the police department, the city, or anybody regarding this matter. And to get an itemized invoice without anybody contacting us, in my mind, is not good business practice. So what I'm here to ask for is that this matter be just overturned, be cleared off the table, and I guess that's all I'm asking for at this point. So, Any questions? Alderman Graff? Thank you, Your Honor. Um, Rich Gephardt, um, can you address that um, as you did in um, the Finance Committee? Mr. Gephardt? I spoke to uh, one of the supervisors uh, in public works and uh, they stated that they had to uh, assign a crew of two men, which is their normal crew, uh, from the regular work site to work on the sign. And then uh, I'm not sure at what point they did that in reference to the timeline that Mr. Rasmussen referred to. Uh, but then they had to return to their, to their site of work. 
and the combination of that was one hour of time that was charged for the two men. Um, after they did the work, it does take some time. There was some uh, delay for them getting the charges from the motor vehicle uh, system, the rental charges to us, and for us to produce the invoice. So I, I don't have the exact timeline of when the work was done versus when, you know, when we received the information for the billing, but that's the general process. I, mean, I can't shed much more than that on it, but if there's any questions, I'll try. Any other questions? Alderman Manning. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, perhaps for Tom Holton, what work was done in the sign? Mr. Holton. I'm not sure exactly what work was done. The, the crew must have been called by the police department or somebody to respond up to that sign to see what was wrong with it. But I guess it was just bent somewhat. But as uh, far as I know, there wasn't any building or any materials. It was the two men and the vehicle to go up there, respond to the call, and go back to what they were doing an hour's time. Alderman Sigali. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, if I may please ask, is this a normal practice? I mean, is this something that's just not this gentleman that you sent this bill to? It's everybody, anybody who has done something like this? Yes. Okay, and may we ask the amount of the bill, please? It's just under $100. Okay, but this is normal practice. When we get called out, yes, it is for an accident, yes. Okay, thank you. Alderman Vanderwill. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, now, if I heard correct, you were told there would be no, uh, I'm sorry, no, no, no citations or, or anything like that, right? Uh, my wife was told that I was not there. I did not talk okay. to the officer. Mr. Robinson, would you please speak into the mic? Sorry. Um, I was not told that directly. Directly, that was uh, information provided to my wife at the time she spoke with the officer. I guess my question is, at what point was he to be notified that he was going to get this bill? Or was this bill the notification? And how long did he have to pay it? Mr. Holden, I think your department issues the, uh, the, the bill. It's 30 days, I think, upon receipt of the bill to pay it. If I understood the question right. If I may, Your Honor. Please do. Um, I guess what I'm getting at is he thought that he wasn't going to get any fines or any citations. His wife thought that. But this wasn't a citation. It was just a bill That's for, a, for uh, going up to look at the sign and straighten it out. Thank you. Any other questions? Alderman Manny. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I just don't know what work was done. And I would like more information from the work crew. Did they come and touch it and say, yeah, it's OK? Did they bend it a little bit? Uh, did the officer have a perception that they should look at it, re-bend it or something? I'd like a little more clarity before I vote. So uh, It was on the police report that the uh, sign was slightly bent. Slightly bent, okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Uh, somebody one. needs to do something with okay, this. Okay, I would move that um, <laughs> that the RC be accepted and um, adopted, and that that document be um, placed on file. There's a motion to, to accept and adopt and, play, and put document number 05062 on file under discussion. Do you want to roll call? No. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? One no, motion carries. Two no's. Two no's. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> Moving on, we are at 9.54. By Alderman Manny, Radke, Sigali, Meyer, and Davis, authorizing the city attorney to engage in the services of special outside counsel for the, for the council and the Law and Licensing Committee in the matter of the hearing on the issue of suspension or revocation of the Tavern License of Three Gems Incorporated. Alderman Manning. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, we need a motion to suspend. Yeah, I move to suspend. suspend. We need a motion to suspend, yeah, to suspend the, rules. the rules so we can deal with this tonight. There's a, Second. any objection to the suspension? Not, please proceed. We don't need no objection. Please proceed. 
Uh, law and licensing uh, dealt with this issue. The uh, party in consideration was open after uh, revocation of license. Um, required closing at midnight. They were open after that and we're not following stipulations and uh, therefore we need a hearing to uh, look at revocation or at least significant penalty. Motion. So, so to move pass the resolution. to pass the legislation. Thank you. Second. There's a motion a second to pass resolution 954. Any further discussion? If not, would you please call the roll, Madam Clerk? Cor I'm sorry, Grapp? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Sagali? Aye. Stephan? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. D. Berg? Aye. E. Berg? Aye. Serta? Aye. And Davis? Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. 955 of 957 will lie over with one notation on 955, and that one will be by Alderman Stephan, not Alderman Berg. 958 to 963 to be referred. Report of committees, 965 by salary and grievance recommending the establishment of a policy to review the hiring of city employees effective immediately during the 206 and eliminating the creating of new city positions. Alderman Grau. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, rather than um, moving to pass that, I, I would refer this, ask for, I would make a motion to refer this to finance. There's a motion to refer uh, 965 back to finance. Is there a second? Okay. There's a second under discussion? Under discussion, Your Honor. The reason for this is because this is going to re, um, involve the 2006 budget quite heavily, and uh, it's asking for um, a hiring freeze of city employees effective immediately, and as soon as this would be enacted, we'd have that. But because we're not quite sure of what all the governor's budget recommendations are doing, as well as we're waiting for what's going to happen with our, our, our present union contracts and so forth. I'd like this sent to finance. Thank you. Under discussion, Alderman Sagali. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, I guess this is um, troubling about the freeze and all that. I guess I need to have some clarification. If we're not able to hire a police officer, if we're not able to hire a fireman, if we're not able to replace any of the public works people that are gone, how can we even start to think then of trying to do a, 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 a tourism committee and have a, a department head and staff included? If there's freezing, there's freezing across the board. Am I correct? That's correct. Okay, now, if somebody retires, you are saying that you are not going to be replacing those people? <laughs> no, I'm not saying that. I'm saying we'll, we'll follow this rule. There are ways to get around it. You have to get three quarters of I think it's three quarters of the council. This is similar to the, to the present, but what I want to do now is send this to finance so that we can discuss it and see exactly what, um, the, the, um, what effect this will have on our, our city budgets as well as uh, what affects the, um, the governor's um, actual budget when it comes out and, and when it's written we'll have too. So we have to work together on this in order to bring out a good budget for 2006. Okay, now I see the firemen here and I see the policemen here, and I would like to make a motion to open up the floor so that the firemen and policemen can discuss this to see what would uh, take place if this does actually uh, be enacted. If I may please make a motion to open up the floor. There's a motion and a second to open up the floor. I'm sorry, who seconded the motion? Mr. Alderman Davis. Alderman Davis, And are you opening up the floor to anybody who wants to speak? I, or? I am, I'm opening up for the city employees, fire, police, public works. Understand the, understand the motion, opening it up. Alderman, I've got Alderman Danberg first <coughs> under, with the motion to open up the floor only. Oh, well, I, I, I was going to make a comment on the document. There's a motion to open up the floor at the moment. Okay, I'll Okay. Uh, Alderman Heldenberg. Uh, my comment was other than opening the floor. Okay. Alderman Stefan. Um, I have no problem with opening up the floor. I guess could we just put it to one person for each department or something? So I think it would be a great suggestion. We don't be need a good amendment I, to you. I, I go. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. Please. We'll open up the floor to one person per department that wishes to address the council a new hiring freeze. Just a vote on it. Pardon me? Just a vote on opening the floor. You're right. Yep. Hold on. We're not calling you yet. Okay, 
on 965 by salary and grievance, there's a motion to open the floor for discussion. All those in favor, state aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. We will open the floor. Who would like to go first? Mr. Firefighter, Mr. Wally Ensley. Ensley. Could I have your name, please? Okay. Thank you. Thank you for opening the floor tonight. Uh, Mayor Flores, Council members. I'm sorry, my fault. That's there okay. You go. Mayor Perez, fellow council members, thank you for opening the floor. When I first saw this resolution on your agenda, um, I thought obviously I had to address it. Representing the Sheboygan Professional Firefighters as their president, we have remained silent on this issue of staffing for a year and a half. We are presently short on the fire department for firefighters as I speak this evening. This is a major concern of the firefighters and it should be a major concern of the older persons. This is a critical, critical issue. We have worked with our fire chief, we have worked with our staff, we have worked with the older persons. We know the budget's tight, there's no doubt about it. In the past year and a half we didn't replace three people. Now we had a man retired, uh, I think at the end of May, we're, so we're short four people. We understand that the budget's tight. There's no doubt about it. When I saw the resolution that was gonna be brought forth tonight, my concern is I don't have a problem and the fire union doesn't have a problem with you putting a hiring freeze on new positions. We have no problem with that. We know there's budget problems. Our problem is we just want the people replaced that have retired in the last year and a half. The Sheboygan Fire Department presently responds not only to fires, not only to every EMS call in the city, every single EMS call, nosebleed, broken bones, stroke, heart attack, seizure, diabetic coma, heart attack, we respond. We respond to auto extrications, confined space rescue, trench rescue, high level rescue, ice rescue, water rescue in the summer, gas leaks, gasoline leaks from cars on the street, natural gas leaks, emergency lockouts when somebody has a three-year-old or a baby in their house and they lock the keys in, we respond to that and we, we open the door for them. Check on welfare, somebody hasn't seen their neighbor, they call the fire department, we go over, break the door in, we check on them. Smoke detector checks, for the elderly and people that can't afford batteries, we put batteries in for them. We do fire inspections, we do pre-plans. We want, run the fire prevention programs in the school districts. We handle any hazardous material call that comes in. The meth labs that you've been reading about in the city of Sheboygan. Not only the police officers side by side with us, very dangerous situation. You might have read in the paper, you get a whiff of it, it could kill you, it's as simple as that. And we assist invalids in the city. We've had many large fires in the past three months. You've probably read about them in the paper. Three fires at Country Village in the past two and a half months on the south, far south side of Sheboygan. Had a major fire about two and a half weeks ago at 8th and Ontario. It was time insurance on the first floor, a church on the first floor, and I believe 15 or 16 apartments. It's a three-story building on the second and third floors. They had two major house fires in the last month, and we will continue to have those, unfortunately. The safety of our children and our families is the number one priority for the firefighters. We're sworn to serve and protect. That's the oath we took, and that's our job. No matter if it's putting Speedy Dry in a gasoline leak, or letting somebody in their house. This staffing shortage is putting a very hardship on the city residents. The only people that know the Sheboygan Fire Department is short staffed are the firefighters themselves and their family members, their wives, their parents, grandparents. No one in this city, when we respond to a fire call, the major fire we had, the last two major fires, when we talked to the neighbors, they said, hey, good job, nice job. I said, do you know we're short staffed? You gotta be kidding me. I said, we're short staffed, yeah. What those four firefighters would do if we had them 
If they were replaced today, what could they do? What would they do? They'd pull an extra line at a fire. They'd cut a hole in a roof. They'd go in into a primary search, rescue someone. We have something on the fire department. When we go to a fire presently, we have what they call a RIT team. A RIT team is a rapid intervention team. What that does, if we go to a house fire, we work as teams. No one, no one goes in by themselves. Two firefighters grab a hose line, they go in a house. One man's pumping the engine, obviously. Somebody's hooking up the hydrant. Somebody's climbing on the roof to cut a hole. And some people are doing search and rescue. What a RIT team does, rapid intervention team, they're our lifeline. If I'm in with another firefighter and the ceiling falls in on me and I call Mayday, we have to have a RIT team to rescue us, to help us. We don't have RIT teams. We don't have the people to do a RIT team. We didn't have a RIT team at the major fire on 8th and Ontario. We called a RIT team at Country Village. Didn't have the people there. The RIT team, I mean, what are you going to do? Called a RIT team. We set it up probably 15 minutes into the fire. It's a critical, critical deal. We want the firefighters in the city of Sheboygan want the people to know. We'll work with what you give us. We're four short. Can we do the job? We're doing the job. Is it safe? No. Those four fires, fires are vital to our operation. If those fires would have occurred, the ones I'm referring to on 8th and Ontario on that Friday night, it came in at 7, 10 p.m. If that fire would have happened at maybe 2 in the morning, maybe a police officer would have spotted it. It's kind of in a, it's downtown, but there's not a lot of people around the parks right there. We probably would have had fatalities. In that fire, we had 14 firefighters respond to that fire. We had 17 firefighters on duty that day. Three of the firefighters had to stay back to prepare in case there was another call. Now, if you can envision firefighting, that's a three-story building with 15 apartments, fully charged with smoke. When we got there, we had five initial people from the fire station right outside here. We pulled up, one man put the pump in gear, he's gotta stay with the pumper. The officer got out, one man pulled a hose line. We had one man on a hose line fighting that fire. Dangerous, unbelievably dangerous. We have a dangerous job, but we would have liked to have had that extra man there to help that hold that hose line. Myself and my partner had to go upstairs because people were coming, falling down the steps. And our orders were to do a primary search. That's our life safety is the number one thing in the fire service, and that's what we were told to do, and that's what we would do. No RIT team. We waited for the other trucks to come in. We put the fire out. Yeah, we did. We just want to let the people know in Sheboygan, no one knows that we're running short. We are not asking for new people. We know, we know the budget's tight. Please, please, when you're looking at the budget, replace those four retirees. We've tried it. We've worked with the city. Our chief has, management, union. We've, we, we, we've tried it. We want a year and a half. Someone is going to get killed or maimed if we don't have our full, our full people. We're short four now. We will have three retirees the middle of December. That'll put us at seven. We right now have a man that might be going out on disability as a, a severe injury. We don't know. We will for sure be short seven people at the end of December. And rather than come to finance or come to salary and grievance and say, hey, guess what, guys? We need seven, eight bodies. Where were you people? You're dropping this on me now, December? What, are you kidding me? We want to make it known. Being reduced to four people on the fire department, <clears throat> it also affects us. No one in this city that I'm aware of except firefighters and their family members know that we presently are parking a fire truck. It's parked right now as I speak at station four on the north side. Manning, staffing, shortages, that's what we had to do. Chief said, got to park it. We don't have enough, we, we don't have the people, we can't man it. If I lived on the north side of Sheboygan and I was paying my tax bill and I thought, well, they're parking a fire truck, what are you kidding me? They are, 
It's parked right now. It's parked right as I'm speaking. At the end of 2003, when they initially said there were going to be budget problems, the fire chief and the staff went to the union and said, hey, you know, there's no money. We got we to deal. deal with this. So what did we do? Oh, what are you going to do? I guess we'll try, you know. Okay, we didn't like it. We had to reduce staff in the end, at the end of 2003, 11 days we were running short. We parked the fire truck two days at the end of 2003. In 2004, we ran reduced staff 71 days. We had to reduce staff. We parked the fire truck 14 days. 2005, right now, we've run reduced staff for 74 days. Fire truck's parked right now. Um, 14 days already this year. We've passed last year. As president of the firefighters, our firefighters wondered, what does it actually cost the taxpayer in the city of Sheboygan to maintain the fire department? What does it cost? I, I didn't know. I asked our chief. He didn't know. I asked people in the city. Nobody knew. So what the fire union did was we do what a lot of government entities do when they set the tax rate. And typically what they do, you'll see in the newspaper, they'll say your taxes are going up so and so on a $100,000 assessed home, this is what your tax bill will be. And that's pretty easy for people to figure out. So what we did, we took a $100,000 assessed home in the city of Sheboygan on the 2004 tax bill, last year's tax bill. Now you have to remember, the tax bill in the city of Sheboygan is made up of six sections, six sections, state, county, the city, school, LTC, and the rec department. Well, the state, county, LTC, and the rec department make up 30.5% of your property tax bill, almost a third. The city of Sheboygan makes up 33.5% of your tax bill, about a third. And the school district takes up 36% of your tax bill. So if you owned a house in the city of Sheboygan for $100,000, Last year, your tax bill was $3,167. That's what you paid on your tax bill for your house if you had a $100,000 home. A third of that bill, because we wanted to know as firefighters how much did it cost for fire protection. A third of that bill is $1,056. So if you're following me, $100,000 assessed home, last year's tax bill, $3,167 total, a third of that is $1,056. Well, when you look at a fully staffed fire department with the four we're short, you paid $17.58 a month for fire protection. That's what, that's what people paid last year. $17.58 a month for fire protection and EMS, EMS protection. Any call, any emergency call that would come into the city, that's what you paid. It's less than your cable bill, less than your phone, less than your heat, less than your gas. It's a pretty good deal. We also took it one step farther. We called the assessor's office, because a lot of guys said, you know what? Yeah, that's, that's nice to know, but how many houses in the city of Sheboygan you think are assessed at $100,000? Because we wanted to kind of get an idea of, of you know, where we're at. 73% of the homes in the city of Sheboygan are assessed at $100,000 or less. 73%. So that gives you a pretty good idea. That's three quarters of the taxpayers in the city were paying a $100,000 assessment on their tax bill or less. Naturally, if your house was $70,000 or $60,000, you were paying a lot less than $17.58 a month for fire protection. We took it one step further talked to my insurance agent this morning. I said, I need a figure from you. Okay. $100,000 home in the city of Sheboygan. What would I pay for fire insurance? $243 a year, he said. We're a class three when it comes to fire insurance, a class three. The best is a class two. Nobody's a class one. Milwaukee's a class two. We're a class three. That's excellent. That's, that's, that's phenomenal. I said, what if that same house was in the town of Wilson, that $100,000 house? What would they pay for fire protection? They're a class nine. They would pay $393 a year. That's a difference of $150 on their, 
on their homeowner's insurance for fire. $150. Pretty wild figure. In closing, I appreciate the time to talk to you. Again, we have no problem with a hiring freeze for new employees. We just, the firefighters union is here in force. Have two battalions sitting behind me tonight and a battalion working tonight. We believe in this. We're not getting anything out of it. What are we gonna get out of it? We just want the four people filled so we can perform the utmost of our profession. And right now with those people being short, we just can't do it. 1993 Money Magazine rated Sheboygan the top seventh best place to live in the United States. In 1995, we were the fourth best in the county for violent crime rate. We were the fourth best. We had the, that's how our violent crime was. 1997, we were rated fourth in the county among world-class manufacturing, small business, rated fourth. 1997, best place to raise a family, Reader's Digest. 1999, third best place to live under 250,000 population. Year 2000, Golf Digest, third best golf course in the U.S., seventh in the world. 2002, top eight places to retire in the country. And 2004, the seventh safest city in the nation among metro areas under 200,000 people. Let the citizens decide if 1758 is a lot of money. I don't think it is. In 1994, when the Shopko building collapsed, we worked hand in hand with the police department. I was there, it was unbelievable. Unfortunately, we had one death and two paralyzed people, but public protection and safety. 1998, the Great Sheboygan Flood. We had firefighters swimming, if you can envision this, swimming in apartments that were, had seven feet of water in, where people were hanging on to cushions a foot from the ceiling. Thank goodness we got there when we did. You had police officers, I know for a fact, leaving their squad cars swimming down Union Avenue in seven feet, six feet of water because there were cars that only had maybe four inch gap to the roof of their cars and they had to check if somebody was in them doing what we're paid to do, doing what the taxpayers pay us to do. And in closing, I'll just tell you a short story. Two weeks ago, my partner and I went to a call at exactly 4.30 in the morning on a Wednesday morning. We responded to the call. It was an assist in invalid call. We do those daily, almost daily. It's part of the service. Went to the door, I was met by a woman, senior, said, hi guys, he wouldn't let me call you for an hour and a half. I said, what's that? My husband, he was embarrassed. You, you guys have come here before, he would not let me call you. I said, that's part of the service, no problem. Where is he? He's in the bedroom. We walked down the hall, went into the bedroom. There he sat, right next to the bed. I said, hey sir, what's up? He says, I just can't get up. He was a large man, big man, and his wife was probably five foot, 100, 100 pounds. So my partner and I, after securing and making sure he was okay, which he was, got under his armpits on each side, lifted him up to his walker. We said, you wanna go back to bed or you wanna, what do you wanna do? He said, well, can I just, can you walk me out to my living room so I can get in my lazy boy? We said, no problem. We walked him out, set him in his lazy boy. And talking to him, I have to get information for a fire run. We have to get information on those calls, name, date of birth, phone number. And I asked his wife, I said, how old is he? 91, 91. And as we were closing up, my partner and I were just gonna walk out and the woman said, thank God for this service. Thank God that you guys do this. I said, part of the service. And I'm not telling you that to pat us on the back, I'm not. That's the service that the citizens of Sheboygan deserve and that's what they expect and that's what we provide. When I walked out to my rig, I looked at my partner, I said, that's what it's all about, man. And he said, too bad people don't know we're short-staffed. And I said, I know. I thank you for your time. I know you have a hard budget ahead of you. All the firefighters are asking is that you please, please look at replacing the people that have retired. 
We have homes in the city of Sheboygan, I can tell you right now, I've been to them. There's 10 people sleeping in the attic tonight, guaranteed. Guaranteed. We get a fire there. Does one person or those two, pers two people help us out extra? You better believe it. Thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you, Mayor, for allowing us to speak. Thank you. Is there anyone from the police department that would like to address the council? Mr. Edson? Thank Eric. you, Mayor. Uh, all the persons. Eric, could you just give us your name for the public? Sure. Eric Edson. I'm the president of the police union. Thank um, you. As police officers, we don't have much free time as the firemen, so I don't have as many comments as the, <laughs> <laughs> my counterpart. But, I, but Wally, Wally expressed a lot of the things that I was going to say also, and it, it's nothing that I haven't said to this body before. I know there's some new people here since I've last addressed uh, the council. Um, I think I was here maybe a, a year, not quite a year ago, uh, when this came up uh, previously about a hiring freeze and my concerns of public safety and, and as it relates to law enforcement. And uh, I told this story then, I don't really feel the need to get into it tonight, but you know, our city is growing and uh, people are coming here from other areas, other big cities uh, with criminal intent. And our job is getting more dangerous every single day. And the longer that we, we run short staffed, the more dangerous it is for us as law enforcement officers having to go to calls alone or just with one other officer uh, and the more dangerous it is for the public to not have those officers available to respond to those calls. Uh, one of my biggest concerns is we're working a lot of overtime to fill staffing needs. We, we f our administration feels that we have to staff our shifts with a certain number of officers to provide a service to the city. And to fill those uh, shifts, we're going to having to staff on overtime. Even though a lot of people think all we do is drive around in our cars and stop at the mini marts for coffee and donuts, you know, that's obviously not true. Law enforcement is a very stressful occupation, and you put an officer in a squad car handling calls, especially in the summertime like this when it's extremely busy, for 10, 12 hours at a time with limited breaks in between, that's dangerous for that officer. He's, we have to make life and death decisions in a, in a snap of a finger. Uh, it's not right that the citizens have to accept that quality of service when it could easily be rectified by hiring the number of officers that our TO allows us to have, our table of organization. Right now, we're allotted 91 officers, and presently we have 85. And one is scheduled to retire in about two weeks, so that'll bring us down to 84. And we've been operating this way for years. For the last three to four years, we've been short anywhere from a couple officers down to seven or eight. Um, I don't mean this with disrespect, but this is, you know, not having any prepared comments, we're tired of it. We're tired of feeling like we're not important to this council. From things like the police department building, which is a whole other issue, to municipal court, to all kinds of other things, bargaining with, with the city, we don't feel that our service is valued by this council. And my only way, reason for saying that is because we've been running short for so long. We don't want extra guys, well we want extra guys, but we're not asking for extra guys to staff our street crimes unit, our drug unit, all the other community service projects that we're trying to do. We're not asking for that. We're asking for, the, to fill, for you guys to fill our TO to the number of officers that we're allotted. We're tired of running short. We're tired of providing substandard service to our community. We want to be full staffed. I don't mean to slight the other uh, city departments. Uh, it's important to have your garbage picked up. It's important to have the streets plowed. But at 3, 4 o'clock in the morning, when something happens in your house, who do you call? You call the police department. We responded to calls as simple as people with bats in their house. They don't know what to do. They call us. They have someone breaking into their house. They call us. Any myriad of calls we respond to, we're the ones that people call. We have to have officers there to respond when someone calls 911. It's as simple as that. I ask you to fill our TO. Don't enact this, this freeze on filling positions. We're not asking for more people, we're just asking to either get up to where we belong with our TO. It'd be great if we could have more officers. But I'm, I'm asking you and I'm telling you, do not enact this freeze. This is gonna be very detrimental to our service and to the community. I, one last comment, I know we're talking about hiring more officers coming up here. 
I know that officers that do the background checks, they go out to these bigger cities to recruit people to come here. They talk to them, why are you coming to Sheboygan? You're from a big city in California or out on the East Coast. Why do you want to come to Sheboygan? It's because of the level of service that we do provide compared to places out there. We have it fantastic here. We don't want to see that go away. For all the things that uh, Wally said about, you know, rated the best city for this and the best city for that, we're proud of that. We don't want that to go away. And it's, it's, I'm afraid it's going to go away with the level of crime that's been happening lately. If we don't have the officers there to handle it, to respond to the calls, those distinctions for our city are going to go away. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Mr. Edson. Is there anyone from the Public Works Department that would like to address the council? Is there anyone from any other department that would like to address the council? Okay, then we will move on to the resolution 965 by salary and grievance. There's a motion to refer it back to Finance Committee. Alderman Van Akron. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Ed Zurich is here. Maybe he can explain it, this freeze better. Is. I think these people have got this freeze wrong. We're not cutting the teal. This is new people we're hiring above the TO, as I understood it. It's not, if it's on the TO, they can hire. It's the last person, if they're adding new people, that it will have to come to the council. Maybe Ed Zurich can Mr. clarify Sir, what they're talking about. Step to the podium. Alderman, please understand that this, this is a motion to refer it back to committee. It's not being voted on to pass or not to pass. Mr. Sarg, you would need to be on the other side, please. <laughs> and next time you can't jump over either. <laughs> Thank you. Excuse me, Mr. Sir. Uh, Alderman Eberg, did you have a question before this? Uh, no, we were told, right? Or a comment? Please do, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, uh, thank you, Your Honor. I think uh, 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 Mr. Surek will likely explain that this is not a freeze. It is a process for reviewing hires. And I think uh, one of the reasons is how eloquently our employees speak about need. If there is, uh, on the referral, one of the pieces of the referral deals with new city positions. And if I might read that part, it said, be it resolved that no new city positions shall be created effectively immediately and during the calendar year 2006 unless reorganization results in reduction of existing p positions or by approval of three-fourths of the Common Council. I think that's a significant part. Now, that would be a freeze on establishing new positions. The question is, where would that most impact? It would impact on the municipal court. It would also impact on bringing the tourism department, uh, if you would, into uh, city government. And my guess is those are likely areas that we should closely scrutinize, where perhaps that three-quarters majority would be a valuable threshold to set. Thank you, Alderman Berg. Alderman Staffan, did you wish to comment now? I can wait till afternoon. Okay. Alderman e uh, D. Berg, did you wish to wait? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Shurik here, he told us that if the, the people are on the TO and there's money in the budget, they can, they can go get their people. You told, you told us that at the Salaries and Grievance Committee, that if, there's, if they're on the TO and they're short and money's in the budget, they can be hired. No, no I, I, that's a misquote, I think. What I said was that, and the committee's here too, is that if, if a position is vacant, it's, it's budgeted, it's on the TO, the department head can bring it to Salary and Grievance, and Salary and Grievance can approve re the replacement of that person. Now, the way, way the program works, and, and Alderman Berg explained it well too, is that it's, it's simply a process. We've been in, uh, for as long as I've been here, we've been through uh, following the same procedure, and that is, again, if it's a budget position, if there's space in the TO, the department can bring it to salary and grievance. If there's a change in the position, either in a job description or in, in some rearrangement within the, in the table organization, it, in, in, as in the past, it's come to council. So this is really nothing new. It just, it's kind of refurbishing what we've done in the past. So. Okay, thank you. Alderman Groff, did you wish to address? Make Only to, to say what you did, Your Honor, and that was this, what the vote is on here, or what we're talking about, is referring this to finance. It's not enacting it tonight or anything like that, but it's referring it to finance. And by doing so, I think, I think you may be saying that 
all these questions can be answered and all concerns can be addressed. Well, that's the other thing I, I was going to say, if, if the members of the police and, and fire and, and public works want to come and address finance, I'm sure they can on this particular Thank document, you, too. Thank you, Alderman Grove. Alderman Serda, did you wish? I guess I'll just refrain from my comments because we're just talking about referring it now, so that's fine. Thank you, Alderman Serda. Alderman Stephan? <clears throat> thank you, Your Honor. Um, I wanted to thank Wally and Eric for their presentations. I think it is something that, you know, finance will have to look at. Um, you know, I do hear from people constantly about taxes, 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 but I've never heard anybody say, you know, I want less cops on the street. I don't you really need a two firefighters. One's okay. So we, you know, have to take that into consideration. Referring, regar regarding referring it to finance, I just wanted to make it known that I'll be out of town at next week's finance meeting. I'll be asking the chair to hold this. So you might want to check the agenda before you just show up in mass. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Alderman Stephan. Any other questions for Mr. Surik? Alderman. Yes, then thank you. Yeah. Not, not a question for Mr. Surik, but an amendment to the referral. The amendment uh, will hold separate for a vote the last further be, further be it resolved. Uh, that will allow us to confirm tonight that no new city positions shall be created effective immediately and during the calendar year 2006 unless reorganization results in reduction of existing positions or by approval of three courts of the Common Council. That would then primarily allow new positions to uh, stand with three quarters of the vote of the Council while the Finance Committee deliberates the uh, portion that deals with the hiring process for uh, positions that are already open. <clears throat> Alderman Serta. Under discussion, I'm, I'm trying real hard here to reframe because I'm being reminded that we shouldn't be speaking on this issue, that it's going to be referred back to finance. Referred I would back. ask for that same courtesy. Any type of changes, let's just get it to finance. I don't want to be amending this document now. I'm refraining from my comments, and I would ask everybody to do the same. Thank you, Alderman Sarda. Good point. Alderman Stephan? I guess I would just ask the city attorney as a point of order. I mean, it seems like the amendment is directly opposite of what the resolution is, says. So I don't, know, I don't know that you can refer it and then pass a portion of it. That seems to be the heart of the whole thing. The amendment is a hostile amendment, which changes the whole characteristic of the motion that's been made. This is why I agree with Alderman Sarda. Refer it back to committee. Let it be discussed there. Any amendments can be made during finance committee. And any department head or any employees are welcome to attend. If there's not enough space, whether it finance committees are held, say so. It'll be <coughs> held here or at some other place. It'll be accommodating to you. We welcome your input. We hope you will be there. And, and we hope we can address this issue at the finance committee. There's no need to get messy about this process here. Pardon me? <laughs> Alderman Vanderwill on that, on the Th referral. Thank you, Your Honor. I was, if this is legal, I was just going to call a question on the referral. Uh, could we have, would you be willing to withdraw your motion? No. No. Was there a second to your motion? Motion dies for lack of a second. We will call a, the roll on referring it back to committee 965 by seller and grievance. Please call the roll. Kittleson, Manny, Aye. Meyer, Aye. Montemayor, Aye. Radke, Aye. Sigale, Aye. Stefan, Aye. Van Akron, Aye. Vanderweel, Aye. Deberg, Aye. Eberg, Serta, Davis, Aye. and Graf. Aye. 13 ayes, 1 no. Motion carries. Uh, 966 uh, will lie over to August 15th meeting. Is that correct, uh, City Attorney? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Lie over. Ordinance introduced, 968, 969, lie over. Matters laid over. I'm sorry, Alderman McGraw. Uh, 966 is lying over till what meeting? August 15th. August 15th. Okay. Thank you. This is pursuant to their request. Everybody get that? Thank you, Alderman McGraw. As I said, 968, 969 will lie over. 832, resolution number 780506 by Alderman Graf, Stefan Montemayor, Susha, and Davis authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 205 budget. Alderman Graf. Thank you, Your Honor. I would move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. There's a motion and a second to put the resolution upon its passage under discussion. There being none, please call the roll. Graf. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Manny. Aye. Ma Meyer, Aye. Montemayor, Aye. 
Radke? Aye. Sigali? Aye. Stefan? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. D. Berg? Aye. E. Berg? Aye. Serta? Aye. And Davis? Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. Other matters preferred, referred by law, 970 and RO by Chief of Police submit his quarterly report for activities commence in April 1st, 05 and end in June 30th, 05. I'd ask for a motion to accept and file. So moved. Second. Motion and second to accept and file under discussion. If not, all those in favor state aye. aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. 971 will be referred to public protection and safety. 972 will be referred to public works. 973 will be referred to public protection and safety. 974 will lie over. 975 will be referred to the Board of Parks and Forestry Commissioners. Other matters, Mr. City Attorney. 976 is communication from Wendy Safransky, 2403D Cross Creek Drive in favor of having a beach area, a dog run, and suggesting checking other communities to find out what they have to offer. And that'll be referred to the Bar a Board of Parks and Forestry Commission. 977 is a communication from Blue Harbor Resort stating that they will be holding their Oktoberfest event on September 24th to thank the public for all their support in the past years and making various requests, including requesting that they are allowed to have beer and wine in a designated area outside of the licensed premises. That will be referred to Law and Licensing and Public Works. 978 is communication received by the mayor from Charlene Dickey regarding taxes in the city and concerns with the proposed cost of the police facility. That will be referred to the Committee of the Whole. 979 is a resolution to authorize a referendum election to be held on the next April 2006 election on the question of whether or not to issue general obligation bonds in an amount not to exceed $8 million for the public purpose of paying for the cost of a new police station. And that will lie over. 9-80 is a... is submitting the Harbor Center uh, Marina balance sheet from operations dated June 30, 2005, as submitted by Skipper Marine. And that will be referred to the Marina and Harbor Committee. Alderman Groff, motion to convene and close. Thank you, Your Honor. I would move that we convene in closed session under the exemption provided in section 19.851G of the Wisconsin Stats for the purpose of conferring with legal counsel for the city of Sheboygan who is rendering oral advice concerning strategy to be adopted by the body with respect to litigation in which it is likely to become involved and under the exemption provided in section 19.851E in the Wisconsin Stats where competitive and bargaining reasons require a closed session for the purpose of considering a letter of interest in obtaining city-owned parcel of land. There's a second? Second. There's a motion to second. Please call the roll. <clears throat> Kittleson? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Sigali? Aye. Stefan? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Deberg? Aye. Eberg? Aye. Serta? Aye. Davis? Aye. And Graf? 14 eyes. Motion carries. We'll take a five minute break and we'll convene in closed session. We're back. We're back in open session. Alderman Graf, with respect to the uh, vacant land offer to purchase. Oh. With that one, Your Honor, I would move that um, we um, draft an ordinance from our resolution, RC. Do we need to draft something from the floor? For the offer to purchase. To um, approve the offer to purchase as well as the sure. added covenants. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Any discussion? All those in favor, please state aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. With respect to uh, 967 by Special Committee on Risk Management, recommended following document, submitted a notice of claim and claim in the matter of Anthony C. Bonet versus the City of Sheboygan and Mayor Juan Perez, and denying the claim and directing the City Attorney to send a notice of disallowance. Alderman Groff. And I would move that the RC be accepted and adopted. Second. There's a motion and a second to adopt 967 under discussion. 
not, please call the roll. Eberg. Aye. Serta. Aye. Davis. Aye. Graf. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Manny. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Radke. Aye. Sigali. Aye. Steffen. Aye. Van Akron. Aye. And Vanderweel. Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carries. All those in favor, state aye. Aye. We stand adjourned. <laughs>